Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover two topics, disk partitioning and swap space management. So this is part of the storage management on which you get at least three to four questions. So the questions can be on disk partitioning, swap space, LBM, status, video. So all the rest of the topics we are going to cover in the upcoming lectures. But today we are going to focus on two main things or the basic things that is disk partitioning and swap space management. So you expect at least one question on one of these two topics. Very simple. Okay, both they will cover more or less the same steps. Only one step is different in swap space. So let's start with the first question. So this is a simple question that you are supposed to create a partition. The partition name is given. So I'm supposing that the partition name is PAR1 and the size of the partition is 1 GB. So this is what is required. Okay, so before I start into the steps for partitioning the disk, for you to practice, you need to have a free disk available. All right. In the exam, they will give you a free disk on which you can work. But here in the system, you use the lsblk command. And here you will see all the disks that are being available in your system. So if you have not added any extra partition, you will see uh, these partitions only. Either now the names can be different depending on what kind of system you are using or what virtual machine you are using, VMware or VirtualBox. Now to showcase this, I have added an extra disk, which is this one, NVM E0 N2. So the size is 6 GB. This is the one that have added extra. So you will not see an extra disk like this. Okay. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to add this extra disk for practice. Okay. So whenever you practice for disk partitioning or LBM or Stratus, you need to have extra disk added to the system. Now I have made an extra video on this, how to add depending upon whether you are using VirtualBox or VMware. So I'll mention the link in the description as well as you can see it at the bottom of the screen. So do watch this video because I'm not explicitly going to add that disk now in this particular video. So you watch that if you know well and good. If you have a free space, fine, you can carry along. Otherwise, just watch that video. It will take hardly five minutes and you will be able to add a disk depending upon which kind of a virtual machine you are using. Now, another way to look at the disk is you use the ls slash tev command. In most of the systems, you will see an entry like sda, stb and so on. Okay. In my case, this entry is nvme0. Okay. But I'm sure that in most of the systems that you are using, it will be here something like this sta or stb, stc. Okay. So the entries will be like this. Now further for STA, you might see certain entries like SDA1, SDA2 and so on. Okay. So like in this case for E0, there are two entries N1 and for sorry for N1, there are two entries N1, P1, N1, P2, N1, P3. So this means that the disk N1 is having three partitions P1, P2, P3. Similarly, if you are having the entries like SDA, STB, so STA is your disk, STA1, STA2 are the partitions within this. So you might have partitioned your disk into two partitions or three partitions like C, D, E drive. So there are three partitions similarly. So you will not get the number like C, D, E, but you will have something like STA1, STA2, SDB1, STB2, STB3 and so on. All right. So that will help you to analyze how many partitions are already there or how many you have created. Moreover, you need this name to tell the system that which disk you are going to work upon. So I'm now going to create a partition of 1 GB. Now on which one I will create if I do LSPL again. So I'm going to use this. So 6 GB disk is this N2, right? <clears throat> E0 N2. So I'm going to partition this 6 GB disk so you can break it into one partition or two partitions that depends upon the question that is asked. Now to begin with the command that is required is F disk. So we're going to use this facility F disk and then you specify on which disk you're going to work. So NBM E0 N2. So here you will write the name of your disk. Okay. So either it will be something like this or as I told you, it will be STA, STB and so on. Don't use the ones that are already being used by the system. So you use that which you have newly added. You are sure that that one is free. 
So now we are going to use the F disk facility, F disk, and then you write the name of the disk. All right, so F disk, and I'm going to use NVM E0 and 2. Okay, don't write it directly. Actually, the location is where slash DEB. So this is the exact location slash DEB slash whatever is the name of the disk. So you will get a command prompt like this. So now we have entered the F disk facility. Now I'm going to work upon the particular disk that I have specified. Right now you want to create a new partition. Okay, so there are sub commands which we will use with F disk. If you don't know all of them, so you can see here it says M for help. So you press M and then enter. So here you will get a list of all the sub commands or options that you can use. All right, so we are going to create a new partition. So here you can see N, add a new partition. So we'll press N and then you press enter. Now it will ask you two things, whether you want to create a primary partition or an extended partition. In total, you can create four primary partitions only. This is where you're going to work. But in case you need to have more than four partitions, then at least create one of them as extended partition. And then within that, you can create more primary partitions. So I'm going to select P here. Now you need to give a number. By default, it will give whatever is the free number available. So I'm going to choose one. That's the first one. Now you need to specify the size. So first we need to specify what is the first sector. Need not do that. Just go with the default. How to go with the default? Just press enter. Okay. It will pick up the very first free sector that is available. So just press enter. Now. Giving the last sector will specify the size. So it is very difficult to know how many sectors should be there. So the easy way is you need to specify the size in either kilobyte or megabyte or gigabytes, right? So for that, since the question was 1 GB, so I'm going to write 1 G. All right, so plus 1 G, right? Plus is important, so it's written here. Plus and then the size, so write plus 1 G, all right? So now it has says created a new partition one of type Linux. So the default type is Linux. If you want to change that, uh, that I will show you when we will go for the swap partition. There's an option for that. If we want to change the Linux type, but we need not do it in this case. Now, once the partition is created, what we need to do is we need to update the table, the partition table. Okay, so for updating or for writing to the partition table, we need to press W. So W is to write table to disk, write table to disk and exit, right? All right, so the partition table has been altered. Still, it will not be reflected because we need to save this using the part probe command. Okay, so part probe, then you specify the name of the disk that you have updated. and two right now everything is done the partition is created if i check using lsplk you can see here that the disk n2 one g 6 gb is now divided into one partition of size one gb here okay so i'll just repeat this once again we will do this now for the same disk and now this time we are going to create a partition of 2 GB. So the steps were first use F disk, write the path of the disk, NVM, and 2 N to create a new partition, P primary, give a name, let's suppose 2 first sector default, last sector plus 2 G size. All right right so w and part probe slash teb bm into right lsplk and you can see that another partition is added of 2g so this is all that you need to do and the partition will be created next part of the question will be you need to mount this partition at a mount place so the mount point they will specify so you need to create that mount point so use mkdir 
let's post the mount point is slash new disk so until and unless you mount you will not be able to write or read the contents of the disk okay now before we mount it now we have i have created the mount point now we know that after partitioning we need to format the disk with the required format otherwise we will not be able to write any content into the partition so there are lots of formats available you need to choose one according to the question that has been specified there within the question okay so let us suppose that the the uh, format is xfs so we need to write is mkfs so this is the command to format dot whatever format has been specified let's suppose it is xfs and then you write the partition path so that is n bm e0 and 2 let's suppose p1 okay so first partition i'm going to format with xfs all right so it is formatted now it is ready to be written so the last point is to mount it so you need to write this mount then what you want to mount and where you want to mount it all right so this is what is the last step now this mounting is fine but this will not be persistent now what is required in the exam is that whatever you do should be persistent persistent means it should be available once the system is restarted so don't use this method for mounting what you need to do is you need to update the a particular file and the file is slash etc fs tab this is where you need to write this mount command okay so i'll tell you how to do that so you open this using any editor nano or bi now this is a sample that is already given okay so this disk have already been mounted so you need not to you know cramp up things there are five entries that you need to make first one is what you are going to mount so what i'm going to mount is slash tev nvm e0 and to p1 so this is what i want to mount now press tab second thing is you need to tell the mount point so the mount point is slash new disk now rest is simply there already specified third thing is what is the format with which you have formatted the particular partition so that was xfs then you need to write defaults then 0 and 0 so these are six things not five so six things you need to tell the partition path the mount point the formatting defaults 0 and 0 so this you need to mug up okay need not to get into detail it's already specified simply copy paste that's it save this use mount minus a if there is no error this means you have written the content in the fs tab file correctly and everything is done so this is the last step you need to do so i'll repeat all these steps once again first you need to do f disk okay do all the partitioning part then you need to create a mount point then you need to update the fs tab file and finally use the mount minus a command and you are good with the partitioning question now the second question is add a swap partition of size 750 mb do not delete the existing swap so this means that the swap partition is already there whatever size is there is smaller than 750 mb so they have asked you to add another partition swap partition of size 750 mb so everything is going to remain same just a few modifications in the steps that we have done in the partitioning part now you use this command free minus m and it will show you the current swap swap here is 2047 used is 0 free is 2047 so nothing is being used all right now so they have asked is 
to create another one 750 right so use F disk and you need to choose one disk from which you are going to partition this app space so I'm going to use the same disk NBM E0 and 2 again N use the default number uh, okay primary default number is 3 first partition sector fine now plus 750 MB all right now I need to change the type I cannot use the default type Linux now to know the right type press T and I need to select the partition which I want to change for which the I want to change the type so that is partition number 3 which I have recently created now I need to tell the hex code for listing all the hex codes you need to type capital L and all the hex codes will be available okay now what I want is I need swap partition so you can see here 82 is Linux swap so this is what you need to select 82 so in case you don't remember the number just use capital L to list all the hex codes look for Linux swap so now type 82 fine okay so you can see here change type of partition Linux to Linux swap again press W then part probe nbm e0 and 2 no error fine so we have created a swap partition so the next part is we need to format it so you need to use mk swap let me show you first lsplk right so you can see here 750 mb use mk swap to format it slash tev nbm a0 and 2 p3 fine so it is formatted again update the etc fs tab file so same entries again this time it is tev nbm e0 and 2 p3 now in this case there is no mount point so you need to write swap okay again swap this is no format then defaults 0 and 0 save this okay now don't use mount minus a but you use swap on minus a no matter everything is done how to check use free minus m once again and you can see here now the size has increased okay 750 has been added to this swap space okay so this is the summary of what we have done used f disk updated the fs tab file if it is a simple partition use mount minus a if it is swap then use swap on minus a to go through this this is very important expect at least one question directly and indirectly this partitioning concept will be can be used in two to three questions you need to understand it in depth practice it i would say at least once for the next five days do it daily even if you know fine but you still practice it at least once so if you like all this content do subscribe see you in the next video on lbm